I'm gonna tell you something. You gotta have a tremendous work ethic to be successful in here. In other words, and you can relate to this, you gotta have a lot of dog in you. <laughs> you really do, man, if you wanna be successful, because it's, it's gonna be a lot of trying times. So you have to have a tremendous work ethic. But you got to have faith. Faith without works is dead. You hear it all the time. You go to church and you learn all these scriptures, but then you don't apply none of them to your life. You're looking at a man who has made the simple application of three or four scriptures and maxed them out to get here. Albert Einstein said once, he said, imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attraction. Everything you have, everything we have in this world, somebody imagined it. It's your ma imagination is tremendous. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. Your real life, the one God really got for you, is in your imagination. It is not in your current situation or your current paycheck. And if you've been living like that, you have then restricted yourself to a commonality that is really not yours. Because what really God got for you is really in your imagination. There is a scripture that Albert Einstein took this quote from. It's like the book The Secret. The Secret is one of the top selling motivational books ever. But if you read the book The Secret, it's all biblical. Everything comes from the Bible. You really don't need self-help books. You don't need the magic of thinking big, the power of positive thinking, how to win friends and influence people, think and grow rich, the winner's circle. I've read them all. All of that information is in Proverbs, all of it. But let me give you this scripture. You've all heard this, right? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So when I told you a minute ago, you gotta have a tremendous work ethic, but you gotta have a lot of faith. I talk to so many people who get older, like some of us are, and they've lost their faith. Well, faith is really simple. It's the, Faith is the substance of things hoped for. All that mean is in the beginning, you just hope something pop off. You know, you just kind of hope something happened for you. I was hoping I would get on TV. I wrote it on a piece of paper when I was 10. I want to be on TV. The problem I had when I wrote it at 10 was I suffered from a severe stuttering problem. I could not talk outside of my house. So can you imagine when I wrote on a piece of paper, I want to be on TV and turn that in. But when I wrote it on the paper, it wasn't factual. I was just hoping. You just got to start with the hope. Faith is the substance of things that you hope for. You just hope something, Joe. Then what happened is through grace and favor, he give you a couple of them things you hope for, and then you're supposed to start believing then. Because now it turns into faith. But if you take this scripture, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What is the evidence of things not seen? I just told it to you. Albert Einstein said, imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attraction. But guess what? Your imagination really is. It's the evidence of things not seen. Because your imagination, you know why it's the evidence of things not seen? Because you're the only one can see it. Your imagination is actually God showing you a preview of a coming attraction that he has for you. The moment you don't believe in your imagination, you negate what he got for you. Your imagination is the preview to life's coming attraction. It is the evidence of things not seen because can't nobody see it with you your problem is you keep telling your imagination to the wrong people see if you want to kill a big dream tell it to a small-minded person it's dead how many times man have you had a tremendous idea something you thought was the one and you wouldn't told it to your loved ones and your so-called friends and they shot it down. I mean, you was convinced that it was just, oh man, I just came to you. 
and you told it to them and they shot it down. And you thought since they was your loved ones and their friends and they got your best interests at heart, you believed them. You was wrong. They taught, you let them talk you out of what God got for you. Some of y'all still sitting here with the ambition of opening a business one day, but you scared to go start the business because you got a job and you got bills. Rich people got bills. Everybody got bills. Hell, I got bills. You, you, who, you, everybody owes somebody something. I got something with the bank right now. You're going to let the fact that you got some bills stop you from opening the business, the thing that God done put in your imagination, so you're going to squash that because you got bills. Everybody got bills. Your real life is in your imagination. Can, can, you, can, you, can you grab what I'm telling you? So I don't know what you thought I was going to say to you. I'm just a real dude. I don't even have the education you all have. I flunked out of school. I flunked. I ain't got no education. I don't use four syllable words. What I look, what I'm sharing with you is stuff that everybody can apply today. If you're sitting in here thinking that you're too old to listen to what Steve, hell, I'm 60. But I still rely on my imagination. See, if you think you're too old to make it, let me give you a prime example. Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders has been frying chicken his whole life. He was telling everybody he had the best chicken in the world. Ain't nobody believing. They turned him down everywhere. Colonel Sanders didn't get a franchise till he was in his 60s. Kentucky Fried Chicken sell more chicken than anybody in the world today. So if you're sitting there thinking because you got a little gray on you, you're too late. As long as God waking you up in the morning, that's the sign that he ain't through with you. So what you tripping for? You sitting up in here like, like God can't do nothing for you because you 60. Man, you know what I'm asking God for right now? And I'm 60. If you could see my vision board, you would be, you would be blown away. Because I got enough right now. I really know. But I ain't in the need business. I'm in the want business. Ain't nothing wrong with wanting something. Quit going down to these churches y'all sitting up in here going down to. Letting, keeping you in these little boxes. God got a big life for you. The smallest scripture I ever read changed my life. The scripture real simple. You have not because you ask not. Do you know the difference that that could make in your life? I'm just giving you real talk now. I'm just trying to tell you how I got here. See, I, I have no education. When the last time you really asked him for something? Or do you keep making requests that's inside the confines of your paycheck? When you gonna get outside of that? Didn't I just tell you God ain't in your paycheck? Didn't I just tell you he ain't in your job title? The life God got for you is in your imagination. Why you still imagining stuff? Why you keep dreaming of a summer home? Why you keep dreaming of retirement, leaving your grandkids money? So I'm at the age now where I think about my grandkids. I got seven TV shows. Dog, I only need one. One show pay me enough money. I need th four for my wife. The other three is for the grandkids. I just need one. I do not live my life in the confines of what anybody says to me. I let my imagination go, and my imagination is a preview to life's coming attraction. But what that really means is, is God showing you a preview of what he has for you. So now, if you have not cause you ask not, do you understand if you up your ask, he has to up his give? This period. This is simple stuff that anybody can apply. You ain't even got to have no degree to do this. You don't even have to have no money to do this. You can start this today and change your whole game because you're going to need grace and favor anyway. You have not cause you ask not. Quit asking God for little bitty stuff. Lord Jesus, help me make my rent. Don't he always? All y'all got somewhere to stay. 
How about this? Why you keep asking for rent? Why don't you ask for a mortgage? If he gonna give you the money for a place to stay, what difference do it make to God? But if you keep saying rent, ain't he fair? He keep giving you rent. If you ask for a mortgage, he'll give you a mortgage. But you have not cause you ask not. Lord Jesus, help me fix my car so I can make it to work. Why do you keep praying over that raggedy car? <laughs> Why don't you ask God for a car that don't need fixing? You know, they roll them off the assembly line every day. How you can't get a new car? How you serve God? How you go to church and you can't get a car? Just a new car. How you can't get that from God? Yo, why? Because you ain't asking. You keep asking him for stuff that fit in your paycheck. Your paycheck say a 2015 Lexus. So you go down there and ask him for that. And guess what you get? A 2015 Lexus. You up your ask. He up his gear. You have not because you ask now. This ain't a magic trick, man. I get tired of rich people talking to people and they make you buy these programs and stuff so they can drag you out for eight years. I have asked God for some tremendous stuff. Everything he hasn't given to me is on the way. When I was homeless, I lived in a car for three years. I made some decisions in my life, man, and threw myself off a cliff. My decision in October 8th, 1985, I walked into a comedy club for the first time on a dare from a girl. Jesus. <laughs> I walked into a comedy club for the first time. Had never heard of a comedy club. But all my life, I wanted to be on TV. Had never heard of a comedy club. October the 8th, I walked into Hilarity's Comedy Club in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. That's right outside Africa. I signed up for the following week because I just wanted to see what the comedians did. Man, I wanted, I saw stand, live stand-up for the first time. They had 10 acts supposed to go up. Nine of them went up. The 10th guy got scared and went, ran out the door. So I had signed up for the following week. The guy says, Listen, we lost our 10th act. If Steve Harvey's here, come on up now. So I ran up on stage. I'm doing, I don't even know what to do, but I just started talking about boxing and stuff that happened to me. Audience was hollering, laughing. They brought all 10 of us back up on stage. They had a clap off. I won the clap off. I won $50. I cried from Cuyahoga Falls to Cleveland. The girl kept saying, why are you crying? It ain't but $50. I said, no, you don't understand. This is way more than 50. This is what I do. She said, what you mean this is what you do? This is just your first time. Oh, you don't understand. Something happened to me. I won amateur night. I went to work the next day, October 9th, 1985, and quit my job. Now, I don't recommend that you do it that way. Because two years later, I was homeless. Because <laughs> the first year of comedy, I made $3,400. The next year, I made $4,800. And the third year, I made $5,300. I got a wife, a set of twins. I'm sending every dollar I got to them. So I tried to live on $50, $75 a week. Gas was 38 cents a gallon back then. I just stayed in my car. So I lived in my car for three years. Three years, I lived in my car. And what happened was, I just said, man, so I used to fish all the time to eat, because I'm a fisherman, I'm a bass fisherman. So I used to stop at lakes and ponds and just fish. And every night, every month, I get run off from somebody's land. Hey, get away from here. Hey, move along, that's not yours. Hey, stop fishing here, I just get run off. And he didn't understand. And one time I had fish on the line. They said, you got fish on that line? I said, yeah, throw them back. I had to throw them back because I used to stop at rest areas with them little cast iron grills. I kept charcoal in my car. I started a fire and I eat fish. There's some days I wouldn't eat. So that, they thought I was just fishing, but I was eating. So I said one day, I said, man, you know what? 
One day, man, I'm going I'm to get myself some land. I'm going to buy myself a piece of dirt. So fast forward, God bless me. I get on TV when I'm 38. I'm on Showtime at the Apollo. Lord, have mercy. They gave me my money. I saved my money up. I saved $250,000. I said, I'm going to give me some land. That's all I wanted. Because you know the one thing I wanted? I didn't care if I put a house on it or nothing. I just wanted to be a stand somewhere and couldn't nobody run me off. I just wanted... You know, man, I was in a world of hurt. I was so sick of just getting, just getting run off, man, every time I stopped somewhere. Got this money, man. I saved my money. I saved $250,000. I'm going and I'm looking for some land. The first day I get there, I see a piece of land in Texas. So beautiful. I couldn't believe it. It had rolling hills. Had a pond on it where I could fish. I, the dude took me over there. I look at the land. And I'm, and I'm looking out. I said, man, this is great right here. I said, sir, how much is this right here? He said, well, it's about $600,000. I said, man, I ain't, I ain't got that kind of money. He said, well, how much do you have? I said, I got 250000 He said, let me think about it. And I was standing there, and then I stopped. I said, sir, can I ask you a question, man? How many acres of land is that? He said, this is six acres. Six. Six years ago, I just asked God, just give me six. See, I didn't want a whole lot of acres. I just wanted my cut. Just give me my six. And so I said, ain't this crazy? So I thought about it. I said, man, what can we work out? Right before I got ready to say it, the guy that took me over there said, Steve, let me show you something right quick. He took me over to this hillbilly's house. He took me over to this hillbilly house named Jerry Campbell. I was a little nervous about meeting him, man, because I didn't like the way he talked, but mess around turned out to be one of the finest men I ever met in my life. Became a father figure to me. It's an old white man. He took me over and showed me this land, and it was massive. It had three lakes on it. It had rolling hills. It had trees. It was unbelievable, man. I said, man, this is incredible. I said, man, how much is this? He said, this 16 acres. I say, hey man, I ain't got that kind of money. Let me go on back over here to this dude where I can mic and cut a deal. He said, well, let me ask you something. What was you going to give that man over there? I said, well, I hadn't worked it out yet because all I got is $250,000. He said, well, listen, I'm in a little bit of a tide right now. He said, if you can bring me $250,000 cash by tomorrow, I'll give you this 16 acres. I showed up next day, $250,000, 16 acres. See, that's grace and favor right there. That's what that is. So my first piece of land was 250 acres. So I said, man, this is the land that I'm going to save for my family. I'm going to fish on the rest of my life. I'm going to be an old man. So then I got to thinking. I said, hold up, man. You mean you have not because you asked now. I asked for six, six years ago. He showed me six, but he gave me 16. Next thing you know, I had 270 acres of land. Now, let me tell you something. I'm so busy now, I don't even get to go to that ranch. I never can go. And I thought I was going to be fishing and save it for my kids' rest of life. God had no plan for me. That's the ranch that I have my mentoring camp on. I bring a thousand black boys out there with a thousand single mothers. And that was the purpose of that ranch. I never go there to fish at all. But see, that's what I wanted. I thought that's what it was for. But God got another plan. His way is way bigger than yours. You can't even see his way. But you gotta start to hustle. You gotta give God something to work with. Look, if you start hustling and grinding, he'll fill it up for you. But if you ain't got no hustle and no grind, he can't fill it up. So guess what? I don't ever go there to 
to use that land for fishing or not. But I'm changing boys' lives over there. My story is really a story about faith. Really is, man. I come out the dirt. I have no college degree. All of my children do. I got seven kids. I sent their last one on college. I got three boys, two boys come out of Mo House. I got a daughter that come out of Spelman in Berkeley. I got two daughters went to Hampton and I got did, and then graduated from Ohio State. I made sure all my kids went to college because I know they got to have that education. Well, Daddy, you didn't go to college. Well, your ass ain't got no jokes. <laughs> it's been important for me to empower my children, but not only my children, but thousands of young people across the country. And education is the key for a lot of people. But when I speak at colleges and stuff, I tell people, the number one thing in your world is not your education. It's your dream. So what you dreaming about, y'all? What you still dreaming about? What is God still showing you in your imagination? What are you so afraid of? Why would you not take that leap and go for it before you mess around and die? Why would you not go and see what God really got for you before you leave this world? Why would you hang on to a job? Uh-oh. Here's what happens with the job. If you live in paycheck to paycheck right now, when you retire, they're going to give you one third of what you can't live on now. They're going to give you a gold watch and a turkey, and they're going to set you on out to pasture. If I was you, before I leave this world, I'd go see what God really got for me. Just take a chance. Now here's why you should take the chance. Name me one time God has not pulled you through. Just name it. Name the one thing God has never pulled you through. If he ain't pulled you through it, he's currently pulling you through it right now. And the reason I know I'm telling the truth is because you're sitting in here. If God was through with you, he wouldn't wake you up no more. When he wakes you up, it's because he ain't through with you yet. He got something else for you. So why don't you go see what that is? Man, you owe yourself something. Go be free. Go see what God got for you. Oh, Steve, that's easy for you to say. You rich. Hell, did you hear me? I lived in the car for three years. I took, on oh, October 8th, I won $50. October 9th, I quit. How big a jump you want to take? You ain't even got to do that. A lot of y'all got savings. You may not have three years up, but you only need a little bit. Just jump. Go see what God got for you. Quit sitting here in your life posturing like it's okay. Quit funking the fake. Quit faking the funk. Quit, quit, quit got people thinking you something you ain't, man, when you really know you won't be something else. I'm just telling you just like it is. You ain't got to believe me, but you can look at me. I'm telling you, it's proof in this here now that the God you serve God you really serve. will give you what you ask for. He will. I'm not your preacher. I'm a hood dude that messed around with no education, the mess around got to the top of the TV world, balling out of control. And I'm telling you, I was homeless and lived in a car. And I ain't got no education. Now y'all in here got degrees. I see it on your forehead. I see it on you. I feel when I'm around educated people. I know you know how to study and math. I, I can look at you, and I'm so proud of you. But hey, man, the next level. Go make yourself some money. The Bible says a man without a dream or vision shall perish. It never mentions if you don't have an education. 